Okay, so this is my model of a helium atom. We have two protons and two neutrons in the nucleus, uh, and we've got two electrons orbiting in a shell around them. Now, this is something that uh, everybody knows at GCSE, but there's two problems with it that people don't always think of, okay? First of all, if you had a positive charge and you had a negative charge, then these two things should be attracted to one another. So the first question is, why don't the electrons just get sort of, you know, sort of attracted into the nucleus itself? And the second question is if you have a positive charge and a positive charge over here, surely positive charges repel positive charges so that when you try and put these close together, they just want to repel. We know that. But then if that's the case, how can we have a positive charge next to the positive charge here? So what are the reasons? Well, basically, first of all, if we think about the electron orbiting around uh, maybe the central nucleus and here we have maybe just a simple hydrogen atom, if uh, this is moving round, at any point, even though the force of attraction is inwards, if it's got a, a velocity in this direction, uh, because the force is at 90 degrees, that means this causes this to move with circular motion. So we think about just a nice particle, it's moving in circular motion just a bit like the Earth around the Sun, and even though it's being attracted inwards, it's only changing the direction but not the velocity, and that's why the electrons actually don't go into the nucleus itself. The question though of why a, pro a proton can sit next to a proton is a bit more tricky and that's what this video is really all about. So here I have a positive charge and another positive charge. Now at this time if they're both positive they're both going to feel a repulsive force and I'm just going to put that in black. Okay. Now this repulsive force is an electromagnetic force or an electrostatic force and at this time you know these should be equal but they're acting in opposite directions okay as you push them closer together because the distance between them gets shorter or smaller that means the size of this electric repulsion gets bigger and bigger and bigger okay so the closer they get together the stronger they're trying to push apart however there's also a gravitational force because these things have mass and when you put them closer together, the force of attraction is going to be bigger and bigger and bigger. So maybe when they're very close together, gravity is pulling them together. But actually, if I put the gravitational force here, uh, that's it kind of there, you can hardly see it. Because the mass is so small, the gravitational force of attraction between these two particles is negligible. And that means there must be some other kind of force. Not the electrostatic force, not the gravitational, but there must be some other kind of really kind of strong force that only acts at the scale of the nucleus. And indeed there is. And this force here is what we call the strong force. And it's this strong force here that when you that only acts over a very short distance, and when you have two things which are positive, if you get them close enough, the strong force then will actually allow these two things uh, to exist next to each other. Now this strong force which acts between all the nucleons in a nucleus, basically it's carried by something that we call a gluon. So this thing here is going to represent a gluon. And basically a gluon is what we call a boson, and this is what carries that strong force. Now the thing is about these bosons is that they have a very, very short half-life. And that means even if they're travelling incredibly fast, you know, perhaps cl you know, close to the speed of light, even if they travel at the speed of light, because they only exist for a very short amount of time, that means they can only transmit that force over a very short distance. And for that reason, if we maybe look at maybe the size of the force here, which is maybe positive or negative, when we go to a certain distance r away from um, you know, these two things, if they're quite far apart, the force has no impact. And therefore, at a long distance away, these two things feel no force. Now, when they get closer together, it's only then that we have this gluon, which is kind of transmitting the force between them. And what we have then is an attractive force. Now, an attractive force always has a negative symbol. So basically, when these things are quite close, we have an attractive force. When they get to the perfect distance apart, that's when we have the maximum attractive force, and that keeps these things together. Now, at some point, though, if these try to get too close, you know, because if this, at this point, if there's a force kind of pulling in and pulling in, what's to actually stop them pulling into, you know, basically a singularity? Well, when these two things get too close, that's when this force here becomes repulsive again. And what we actually see is we can look at this on the graph here. And what we now have is the graph to show the strength of that strong nuclear force. Okay, basically, they're quite far apart, there's no force at all. When they get a bit closer, that's when the force starts to be a bit more attractive until they basically bond together. And this is what we have inside the nucleus. And it's this attractive force here that is balancing 
the electrostatic repulsion. Again, if it's nice and stable, there should be no net force because it's an equilibrium. And here the strong force is equal to the electrostatic repulsion. And this is basically uh, something that we maybe haven't covered at GCSE, but that explains how we can have protons bonded to protons inside the nucleus. And if we think about nuclei, what we tend to find is that for most of the elements, we tend to have a fairly even number of protons to neutrons when we have the light elements. So if we look at things like helium, two protons and two neutrons. When we get to bigger and bigger and bigger, heavier elements, what we need is because, again, there's a lot of force here kind of pushing each other apart because there's lots lots of protons. It's not a nice simple case of just two things. If you have something which is particularly heavy, um, then what we need is we need lots of neutrons to actually sort of almost like kind of uh, dilute the strong electrostatic repulsion. And that's why if you look at heavier elements, what we find is often more protons than there are, so there are often more neutrons than there are protons. And that's also the reason, because this strong force is carried by the gluons, which can only transmit that force over a certain distance of about, you know, 10 to the minus 15 metres. That's why we have like a, an upper limit to the size of the atoms. And that's why we don't have things with 200 protons in the middle. Um, and even the heavier elements, they tend to be a bit more unstable and therefore more radioactive. And they don't exist for very long because this, this gluon can't travel around the whole thing holding it all together. But again, uh, I've got a few more videos which explain and, you know, look into this in a bit more detail.